Hello, everyone. Welcome to the live stream on day two of the Guest Ad Tech Virtual Summit Dubai. Thank you for joining us, and we hope that you're enjoying your time at the summit so far. A few bits of information about the live session before we get underway. For any attendees who haven't yet attended any of the previous live sessions at the summit, there's a chat panel located on the right-hand side of the platform. Please feel free to ask us any questions, and our moderator will get back to you and pass these along to the panelists. Please note that because they are moderated, there may be a slight delay in your question or answer showing. We'll do our very best to get through them all, but if we don't manage to, don't worry, as they're all saved in the system, and we'll get back to you after the event. If you want to watch the session all over again, we'll be uploading the recording here on the virtual event platform shortly, so please keep an eye out for it. We're on social media during the, during the event, so if you want to connect there, follow us at Guest Education on Twitter and use the hashtag, hashtag Guest at Tech. And now I'd like to introduce our fantastic panel of Apple Distinguished School Leaders. Our chair and moderator, Naveen Valrani, CEO of Arcadia Education, Julian Hammond, principal of Repton School Abu Dhabi, Zoe Woolley, headmistress of Warmark School Dubai, and Michael Henderson, digital lead at the Sheikh Zayed Private Academy for Boys. We hope that you enjoy the session, and over to you, Naveen. Thank you, Danny, uh, and thank you for all those who are attending. We have a distinguished panel of speakers with us today and a very, very interesting subject matter to discuss. I'm going to start with uh, a request from the panelists to introduce themselves um, and their schools. Uh, so we start with uh, Jillian, Jillian Hammond. Jillian, over to you. Thank you, Naveen. Yes, I am the uh, very proud principal of Repton Abu Dhabi, uh, part of the Repton Family of Schools group. Um, I'm joined today by one of my peers and colleagues here, Zoe Willey. Um, we are leading our students through their curriculums uh, using technology. And um, we very proudly became um, the first Apple Distinguished School back in 2006 uh, in the whole Middle East. I know we're all very competitive about that. And we support our other schools um, locally through their journeys in using technology and enhancing uh, their curriculums as well. But we really do believe in technology to enhance and extend and excite students through their curriculum and make it relevant. Them. I'm going to keep it short and sweet. I know we have two minutes. I'll pass back to you, Naveen. Thank you. Thank you, Jillian. Over to you, Zoe. Hello. Good afternoon, everybody. Yes, um, I'm the headmistress of Hallmark Dubai. We are part of the Repton family of schools um, and very soon uh, to be renamed uh, Repton Al Basha, which we are very excited um, about. So we became an Apple Distinguished School in 2018. Um, and it was a lovely, lovely journey, um, our journey um, en route to being Apple Distinguished. And we learned so much and we saw a real enhancement in what we were able to deliver uh, to the children, how we could enhance our lessons, um, and also just to ignite that uh, real spirit of innovation and uh, collaboration um, and that's something that uh, we've held on to and it has just grown and grown over the years so very very pleased to be involved today thank you zoe over to you michael thank you yeah i am uh the digital lead for the shakeside private academy for boys here in abu dhabi uh we've been open since 2015 um, and that builds on our girls' school, which opened in 2000. Uh, we're an American curriculum school, but we have a, a strong focus and emphasis on uh, Arabic and Islamic studies. And um, with over like 93% of our students being UAE nationals, slightly different to maybe some of the other schools that you'll hear from today. Um, we do have the one to one iPad program, and we became an Apple Distinguished School status in 2018. I'll keep it short and sweet. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Um, my name is Naveen Varani. I am the moderator for this session. I am the CEO of Arcadia Education. And is in, part, in our group is Arcadia School. Uh, like uh, Zoe's school, we became uh, ADS in 2018. Uh, and again, for us, you know, innovation uh, uh, is a necessity. And uh, getting the ADS status was uh, 
a, a, crown, uh, a crowning moment on what has really been a journey of innovation for us. Uh, and the one-to-one -one Apple program has played such a central role in where we are today. So we're going to get down to the questions again. You know, the overall topic is 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 extremely interesting, and I'm sure we can spend hours talking about it as to how our respective schools uh, boosted student learning during the pandemic. Uh, but my first question, and uh, Zoe will start with you, is: um, Do you believe your focus, your school's focus, Formark's focus on innovation? helped your students learn during the lockdown? Absolutely, yes. Um, I think the the mindset that you um, embrace as an innovative school um, is, is, is just invaluable in any situation that uh, sort of throws you a curveball. And it, having that uh, solution-focused approach um, happy to take a few risks, happy to try things that we haven't tried before. All of that um, definitely helped um, as we as we took our studies offline. Um, I think the the spirit in which we address our learning um, and therefore deliver our teaching in the school um, comes from a place of encouraging innovation, a growth mindset. Um, and just really um, you know, not, not seeing anything as a challenge too far. Um, and then when you combine that with, uh, with the staff, the parents and the pupils all having that approach, um, we could very easily move off site. And we also very easily move back on site again, um, which, which was you know, also an important part of the process. So, um, yes, absolutely, innovation helped. Great, thank you. Gillian, um, how do you believe the focus on innovation helped uh, students at uh, Repton Abu Dhabi uh, during the lockdown? My goodness, I mean, we were a British curriculum school, uh, FS1 all the way up to year 13. And um, as Michael has said, one-to-one -one devices for our students. And it meant that our staff, our parents and our students had the confidence to literally switch overnight. And interestingly, we had planned um, a remote learning day already. We call it remote learning rather than distance learning. And we planned to have a remote learning day so that we could trial all of these mechanisms that we're using because we could see that this was the route that things might be going. And, and we have students that join us from uh, overseas. We have 83 different nationalities represented at our school. We're a truly international school. And some students have wanted to join us earlier than they can actually travel into the country. And so we were able to offer them the opportunity to join our community earlier because of the technology that we already use. So we were very confident and we wanted to do a very bespoke parent consultation day. So we'd actually sent out the schedule ready. Parents were booking their appointments for our remote learning day. And obviously we then got the news. It was that we, all of the principals went to a briefing on the Monday being told that we would be going into lockdown. So we were very fortunate that our, our community had the skills, but I would say most importantly, the confidence to know that this is going to be okay. We know that outstanding learning can still continue. We know that we can stay connected as a community um, and that we know we can seek IT support if we require it. So parents, staff and students were, were fully confident in moving into that. And had we not been one-to-one -one, and had we not already been able to distinguish and, and built it into the curriculum, I just can't imagine how other schools have coped. And we were very pleased then to be able to offer support and advice as an Apple Distinguished School Fire addict to the other local schools. That was, and I know Michael, you did the same. So, well, thank you for sharing, Julian. A little bit of Bill Gates there almost foresaw what was coming, and you had it. Uh, <laughs> a of learning plan. Um, Michael, um, tell us about the uh, Sheikh Zayed uh, Private Academy. How did? Uh, how do you believe? Uh, uh, your uh, being an ADS school uh, with your focus on innovation helped during the lockdown? 
yeah, the same as what everyone else has already said, you know, it really has helped from this. I mean, our school motto is honoring the past and educating for the future. And we already have a really strong emphasis on that innovation and moving forward. And, you know, students, before all this happened, we use iPads every day to, for all sorts of reasons, whether it's using a camera to do a slow-mo of a science experiment or, you know, presenting high-quality presentations using keynotes and designing models on CAD CAM using augmented reality, all sorts of things are going on all the time. So when it came to the online learning, it wasn't much of a shock or a change for us as a school community as it definitely could have been had we not had those devices. Uh, we knew that our students were confident in using using the technology, so it meant that we we were confident in knowing that the the learning would continue to move forward. We weren't fa facing the challenge of okay, we need to try and make sure that they're recapping information. We knew it could continue and they could learn new information um, and then work towards you know we we didn't know, we don't know how long this is going to go on for. It could go on for even quite even now, it could still go on for quite some time, um, and we've really seen that confidence in the students, and actually quite a lot of them because they're at home and they have to take take their responsibility for their learning in a, in a different way. They've really have um, come on leaps and bounds. Some of them, and I, I really think that having that in focus on innovation beforehand has helped massively during this situation. Thank you, thank you, Michael, for sharing. Um, Michael, the next question, we're going to start with you. I know you are very hands-on uh, and uh, probably the most hands-on person on this panel, including myself. You, uh, you really know what's going on at the, at the ground level when it comes to the Apple products and, and Apple ecosystem. But what do you, you believe specifically uh, it is about the Apple ecosystem and Apple products that allowed you to deliver learning during the pandemic? Yeah, you're right. Like I, I've been an Apple Distinguished Educator and Professional Learning Specialist. I do work with all sorts of schools around the Middle East, um, and you know, obviously, focus on our school itself. But I think for me, it's how clean and intuitive um, it is to use Apple products. Like it's the navigation, how to navigate your way around an iPad is just so easy. Um, when they're in something like Pages, they the controls they have, they know they've got the two two buttons that they tend to use the most, the plus button and, and the paintbrush, which if you look at any other platform that's similar to do the similar kind of job, their interface, their, the, the, the bar at the top is just full of things that it's just overwhelming for them. Um, so from the iPad, students can do so much and share whatever they want on any platform once they've created it. So they, although they're creating it on iPad and they're using native apps, it still interacts with other apps afterwards. So they can share that with whatever platform they're using for their online learning. Um, and that's what I think's really helped specifically about the Apple is it's everything they need is there in front of them. They, and it's just so easy. Steve Jobs would be yeah. very, very proud of you, Michael. Uh, Jillian, uh, is there something specific about Apple products and the ecosystem at uh, Repton Abu Dhabi that allowed you to enhance learning during the, the pandemic? Absolutely. I mean, for us, we, and certainly part of the advice that we offer in other schools, is that you need to make sure you use all apps that are available, freely available already from Apple on each of their devices. And because there is there's so many things you can already do with all of those, and, and you know we train up the students to use the Apple devices as tools. So in the same way as they would pick up a textbook or a pen and a pencil, the children are just turning to their iPads instead as tools because so many tools are already built into that. So it means it's great value to us as well. Um, along with that is that we have amazing connectivity. So it really is a tool for students to be able to research, to be able to share, to be able to safely be online. There are a lot of tools and, and um, protocols and mechanisms that we can put in place that ensure the safety of our children as well. And then we have lots of other exciting things that we can do, and I'm sure there are lots of very good apps out there. I'm not saying that these are the only ones. Um, but when we, um, host, when we presented at the uh, Abu Dhabi Science Festival, we were delighted to be able to bring science and other activities to life with apps such as Garage Band, Frogopedia, the 4D Anatomy, building um, robots to be able to tra traverse over a moonscape. 
we were very excited to be able to share that technology with other visitors that, you know, hundreds of thousands of visitors actually came to see Repton School at the Science Festival. And it was our students delivering that training to other students as well. And so there is this excitement around the products. And, and as Michael has already said, they're intuitive to use. Um, and so straight away, if we need anything fixing, we go and ask a student how do we use this, they'll tell you straight away. Um, but they're also then, their curiosity is ignited and they want to design their own apps. And that is certainly what we've been able to do in using Apple technology and having their support because children are encouraged to be explorers and innovators themselves. Um, and the development of their apps and coding um, is wholly impressive. We're very excited about their capabilities. Thank you, Gillian. I'm sure you must be very proud of your students. Does it show? Does it show? I am. <laughs> um, Zoe, uh, what what is it about the Apple ecosystem that allowed uh, Formark to deliver uh, learning during the pandemic? I think one of the the key um, the key things about uh, Apple products is is that the the company that uh, Apple um, has that commitment to education. And, um, and I think that's what we feel when we use the products, that they are uh, developing things, they want the products to be uh, user-friendly for all users. So for us as staff, uh, for our youngest users in, in FS, for our oldest children, uh, for the parents to be able to use their own uh, devices to support us, uh, for the staff and to be to be working with um, a provider that has that commitment and has that core value of, of wanting the very best um, educational resources to be accessible to to our learners that that is really refreshing um, and I think we can feel that because the security is there the innovation is there um, and it's very very user friendly um, so just just having that uh, that sort of someone looking over you saying yeah this is all in the in the um, the spirit of um, enhancing education um, is really important to us. Well, I hope Apple Education is listening, particularly when it comes to uh, time to renew our our contracts and our our purchase our devices. Uh, lots, of, lots of loyalty is power towards Apple. Um, Next question, um, Gillian, I'd like to uh, start with you. Um, Apple products are often perceived as being expensive. Do you feel that the added investment from parents is worthwhile? Well, I'm glad you used the word as perceived because things are only expensive if they're not perceived as being highly valuable and that you're not getting great value out of them. And I think I've already answered the question before in saying that we feel that we get great value out of the tools and the capabilities and the sharing capacity and the safety that we gain out of that. But on top of that, what Apple does for us and being part of that community is that we are a community to support each other. Our staff have these incredible training development opportunities to become Apple Distinguished Educators and Apple Professional Learning Specialists, such as we've got here today with Michael. Um, and that community is incredible. And if you've seen them online, and if you haven't already, anybody that's joined us today, go and have a look because the ideas that they then share and the participation and the, the collaboration that we have is absolutely phenomenal. And, and we run an annual digital literacy summit of an Apple Distinguished School, whereby we invite all of those Apple learning professional uh, specialists and other educators who want to become involved to share best practice and to train each other. And we run these training sessions and actually record them so that we, we build up this huge library as well of training that staff can dip into and out of depending on their level of training that they need. So we actually feel it's, it's great value rather than expensive. And I think it depends how you do it. Some schools invest in purchasing the one-to-one -one themselves and some other schools have done it other ways where it's bring your own device. So there's different mechanisms of doing that, but I think parents ultimately pay fees 
And I think if they can see that we are educating and training their children to be employees of the future, and let's face it, there are is IoT systems around them all day. We're constantly talking to Alexa and, and our internet searches are constantly being followed. Students need to understand this. Um, and parents can see that the development in their students, particularly during remote learning, has been outstanding. In fact, they've been very surprised. So I would say great value of the Great, thank you. Uh, Zoe, uh, what about at uh, Formark? Do you feel the added investment in Apple products uh, is worthwhile? Absolutely, and uh, we, we are a, a premium education provider, and, and with that, we need to work with premium tools, and, and Apple is a premium product. And uh, so, therefore, you know, it's it would be a well, it would be a false economy to to try and cut corners. Um, but also, Apple Apple does what we need it to do, um, and it also is constantly evolving uh, and and is adapting to the the educational climate that we're in. Uh, we also get incredible support. Um, so, you know, as um, Julian said, there we we are connected as a as a big Apple family. But this support that we get is is invaluable um, because we are we are our staff. Um, you know, it, it's very uh, to work with products that are evolving at such a fast rate. We need to keep our training up to date. Um, we need to keep our our staff one step ahead. Uh, and Apple um, allows us to do that and supports and guides us through that journey very, very easily with the appreciation of the fact that we are all incredibly busy um, and um, <laughs> uh, we, we haven't got uh, we haven't got a lot of time to be trying to do our own research. So everything is very, very easily available in order that we can deliver the very best. So um, yeah, it's, it's definitely worth that added investment. Thank you. Thank you, Zoe. Michael, what about at the uh, Sheikh Zayed Private Academy? Uh, is it worth the added investment from parents? Absolutely. Absolutely. I couldn't. And I'm not just saying this because we use Apple and obviously we're in an Apple thing right now. But honest, honestly, like you think about Apple products, you, yes, they might be slightly more expensive than other products out there. And I've been and I've tried other products. I've worked with other products in other schools as well. But once you get the Apple product, you, you've got everything that's built in with it as well. You're, you're investing in the Apple company, not just that one piece, one device. You know, you're, you're getting all of the native, powerful native apps that are on there, which are completely free. And also you get, you know, the support that's there online for parents, online there for educators, the free professional development programs that they have for their teachers. Like if you, you they're purchasing more than just the, the iPad, you know, and, but, on that subject, you've also got to look at it from a parent's point of view. If they don't understand what, how powerful the iPad is, they're going to be thinking that it's not a well, worthwhile investment. They've got to realize how powerful it can be. You know, people have produced music and got number ones around the world using GarageBand, which is completely free. Presenting information, analyzing data and creating movies, learning to code, all completely free using Apple technology. So what, once they understand that and they see also then that along with the fantastic accessibility features that are on iPad in comparison to maybe some of the other pl platforms or products, um, along then with, you know, everything that it, it has, it really is well worth, worthwhile. And I would encourage people to, it's more really important that they get that across the parents, especially perhaps in a, an environment where, Parents are used to textbooks. They're used to exercise books, and where do I revise from? And it's when you then change that and think, and then kind of show them how much more they can get from using technology and using iPads and stuff like that, that they will then be on board and see that that's completely worthwhile. Uh, we are truly shutting the door on uh, Microsoft and Google. I'm sure Apple is very proud of this panel. Uh, <laughs> Michael, uh, I'd like to start with you on the next question. Uh, going forward, what uh, innovations, technology innovations that, you, that uh, Sheikh Zayed Private Academy acquired during the pandemic do you believe will be retained as your school begins to return to full normalcy? Sure. Well, I would. I was. I don't actually know whether we 
learn or we acquired anything different. I don't feel like we, we didn't have to purchase anything new. We didn't have to do any, we just adapted to what we already had. And that was the beauty of already having this from this from 2015 working towards the ADS is we we were already there and we didn't know what was what was coming but we we were there and yeah okay we've done things slightly differently like we're using more of like the built-in screen recording features we're using uh you know making more movies using iMovie you know all that kind of thing to support the the asynchronous learning that's happening but actually and i think that will continue you know whatever lms platform you're using you will continue to use uh, asynchronous videos to support the, the learning you will then maybe have more of a open ended okay just demonstrate your understanding rather than everyone needs to write something down which you know they can demonstrate it in many ways using whatever multimedia platform they want but um and i think that's the other thing i would like to stress is that the built-in features that Apple have, if you don't know they're there, you're quite susceptible to be then going to companies and paying for things that you can already get for free. And I see it a lot, you know, that people will go out and, oh, I spent X amount of money on make a, a thing that will make a book. Forget not knowing that Pages makes books or that screen records, even though the iPad already screen records. So by making sure that you are understanding what's available there and then thinking about what you need and going to find it rather than letting people come to you and saying this is a really good product i've got buy it off us switching that around and making sure that you know it's focus more on what you as a school going forward need um but going back to the original question yes i think there are things that we will uh take from it especially the kind of putting more resources on our lms and having that available for all times your expertise is truly coming through um zoe Hey, um, what do you believe you will retain uh, the innovations that you picked up during the pandemic that will be retained after? I think mean, the fact that um, we were all able uh, to deliver education and children were able to, um, to access education remotely. Um, and I think, I think if we were honest, that was the eventual route we were all traveling down, um, the eventual destination. We didn't think it was going to happen in a, in a matter of months, so we were expecting it to be a, a number of years. But I think the fact that, that we have got used to working without paper. Um, you know, children still manage to complete assignments. Uh, we still deliver quality education, and yet we didn't use a textbook, and we didn't we didn't mark a paper exercise book um, during that time. Um, and that's something that you know I, I think we've made a shift now, uh, and that's going to be something that that we you know we might return in a limited capacity to that, but we, we definitely won't uh, return fully to that. That would be now a step backwards. Um, the lessons being accessible wherever you are, and, and particularly in an international uh, community as we live. Our, our children travel. Uh, they travel or they have, you know, for various reasons, they, they can't come into school, they can't be on site, but suddenly now, uh, school and learning is available wherever you are, being delivered by your your teacher who knows you and knows your your learning journey and can support you in that. So a lot a lot has changed. Um, having we have you know even at the moment we've got distance learners uh, accessing our live lessons. Uh, I've been into lessons this week where I've sat in, in a room and I can see the teacher is teaching the children on site exactly the same lesson as those children who are off-site and they are contributing to the lesson as if they're in the room um and that that is you know is groundbreaking that we've all embraced that with ease um you know if that if for any reason a child can't get onto site just like that we can we can switch over and i think it's it's that freedom and that innovation uh, that that uh, we, we will never um, look back on now. It's, it's an exciting time. It, it makes you really uh, excited for what else is achievable if we were, if we had even longer to plan for it <laughs> rather than switching within two weeks' notice. Uh, but it's, it's an incredible time for education. In, incredible, very exciting time. 
Yeah. Thank you, Zoe. Uh, your uh, commitment uh, to sustainability is really coming through. Uh, and I know Apple as an organization yeah. believes in that too. So uh, so it's good to hear uh, about the, the lack of paper use during the pandemic and even after. Jillian, uh, over to you. Uh, what do you believe uh, Repton Abu Dhabi will retain uh, from, from what you learned uh, in terms of technological innovations during the pandemic? Well, first of all, I'd like to apologize to you that the lights have gone off around me. So we are a sustainable school and I hope you can still see me, but I'm sat in a room where there's a motion sensor. So the lights have gone off around me because I'm not moving enough, but I shan't stand up to come back. Um, like like the, my peers here, we, we won't be buying, uh, um, we stopped, if I'm honest, a couple of years ago buying textbooks. We're, we're not a huge believer in textbooks. We believe that textbooks become out of date whilst they're being published and printed actually. Um, whereas the access to the internet is the most up-to-date and most reliable source of information as long as we, we teach students about sources and, and reliability. Um, but for us moving forward, most definitely our communication, open communication with parents um, is something that we'll be taking forward. Parents are now taking part and are witnessing the learning firsthand for themselves. Um, in as Zoe said, there's no excuse anymore for children not to be learning if they're at home because they're poorly. That's okay. You can carry on with your learning. Um, if you know if they're on long term, it's okay. We, you know, you can still be doing this. If they're suddenly approvals for holidays and things like this, it's not a problem because we still expect you to be attending school. Um, and so this that is something. But the the real access parents have to us now is something we'll never go back on. So we hold parent webinars where we train parents on all kinds of different things, um, supporting your child through sleep patterns, educating your children about healthy eating and exercise, helping your children to read and learning languages. And we do all of these webinars to support parents. And usually in the past, the attendance varies depending on what time of year we do that, because parents work. And what we found is that parents have been dialing into our Zoom webinars and um, because they can do that at their desks with headphones on in their workplaces and we've seen this we've seen parents participating with all sorts of office backgrounds um, and that has been fantastic oh there we go i'm back in the light and um, so <laughs> i'm moving around more um, so our attendance from parents to parent consultations their participation in their children's learning is something that we'll never go back on the other exciting Thing that we've been able to do is, as, as uh, Zoe and I have mentioned, as international schools, we have students joining us from all over the world, and yet travel has stopped. So we've been offering, if you go to our website, you'll see the virtual tours. So you can literally move around the whole building and go into classrooms, and that, and that has been really revolutionary to put children's minds at rest that they can picture what their school looks like for when they do arrive. That has been absolutely fantastic. Um, we try and stay one step ahead of the game as well as Apple Distinguished and being innovators. And we've just launched our IDA um, program for offering um, support to parents and families and their fees that join us mid-term. And so that is using artificial intelligence driven algorithm, that's why we call it IDA, to actually determine what rate of fees should be. If a parent joins us, for example, for the, the last two weeks of this term, which we actually have some children doing because they want a smooth transition into term two. Um, so we feel a responsibility to continually innovate and to share that with our students. And we certainly loved all of the Zoom breakout sessions, we've loved that parents have been able to sit back and watch the assemblies with their children at the weekend because we've recorded and shared those with them. Um, and yes, yeah, so we're, we're very excited and I think there's going to be quite a few things that are, will never go away. We're going to take forward with us. Thank you. Thank you, Gillian. I do know also at Arcadia that uh, our parents uh, love the virtual parent-teacher meetings. And that's a feature yes. that will, uh, will surely, I think, remain uh, for schools, not only in Dubai, but possibly globally, uh, as one of the, yeah. the yeah. popular innovations of the, of the, that came out of the mm -hmm. pandemic. Um, the next question is, uh, is, is a little controversial. And uh, Zoe, I'm going to uh, start with you. Um, do you support the use of technology in the early years? 
And I know you mentioned FS in your in your introduction. Um, so if you do support it, how do you limit the possible disadvantages associated with putting young children in front of devices? So uh, yes, we do use technology um, in our FS. Um, the, the children in FS um, have iPads and um, it is a learning tool. Um, it, it is used in the classroom in the same way uh, in FS as uh, you know, the mud board is and the innovative kitchen and the role play corner um, and we the way that we are teaching the children if they need to access the iPad uh, in order to support the activity that they are doing and uh, then yes they can and and I think from that early age if it's not if it's not seen as a device just as a time filler but it's actually seen as a useful tool uh, that can add value to what you're doing then that that is perfectly okay uh, we don't use them in anywhere in the school as, as a time filler um or just to you know uh, just to do something at a break time our ipads throughout the school are used in the same way they are an educational tool and and actually if we can um if we can introduce the ipads um lower down in in fs then actually we're already on the right learning path when we enter year one, year two, and, and you know, um, upwards. Um, they're also a very valuable tool in communicating with the parents. So we use the Shobi app, um, and um, you know, we need, therefore, to have that something that supports that platform. And that's our homeschool communication at classroom level. Um, and the children can can share with their their parents at home uh, what's been going on in class. They can use that as a stimulus for conversation, explaining their day, explaining their learning, get the parents on board and excited about what they've been doing. Um, so it, it, it's a tool, um, just like anything else. Um, it's a tool, and and if we educate children and we model as well. Uh, as staff how to use these tools in the correct way then actually um i i'm they're not they're, they're, there are no dangers there is no downside to this um it's it's all very very healthy and um technology is all around us we just need uh, people to be um using it in the correct way thank you zoe you made your stand very very clear let's see if uh, jillian agrees with that so jillian over to you absolutely i, I couldn't agree more with zoe we it's not a game it's not a, something that we play with at school um, and we rely on our parents to enforce that message as well and as zoe said they we ask parents to model that and um, so we're very clear uh, during our break times uh, and lunch times in the ordinary timetables that children are not allowed to be on their iPads during break times and lunch times. Break times and lunch times, as we would hope dinner time is at home, is for talking and socializing and playing other games, interactive, physical, social games. Obviously, there's some restrictions right now. Um, and so for us, the message to our whole community is that one size doesn't fit all. And that's certainly what the evidence says about screen time. We, we obviously try and keep a close eye on screen time research it's very inconclusive at the moment majority of the advice is that children aged two to five years shouldn't be spending more than an hour a day on screens and then above that one size does not fit all it will depend um, but what we do say and what we insist on is that it should be quality it should be controlled and there should be movement so the children should not be just sat swiping, not really engaging. It should be a quality activity. It's being used as a quality tool or it's put back down again. We're not using it just to mindlessly sit there and watch something. It's not a nanny. It's not, you know, something just to, to look after the children. We're very, very clear about that. Um, and also the controls have to be there. You have to be very, very specific about that, particularly as the children get older. And it's important that they understand that we're not trying to uh, parent and control them in that, that scenario, but we do have to make them aware 
that going online can be a dangerous place. And so right from a very early age, we teach all of our children around digital citizenship so that we can trust them and that we make sure that they understand what it means to be safe online, what they need to do if they feel unsafe or if there is something going on that is upsetting or worrying them. And also we teach them how to be responsible themselves. So they need to be kind when they're online and they also need to recognize that anything they share, especially images, can stay there for life. And so it's very, very important that schools have a really robust digital citizenship program to ensure that children, when they are online uh, and they are having screen time, that they understand what it's about and how to stay safe and also how to stay healthy. So we build in a lot of well-being as well. We don't want children to be static and not moving. Um, and we teach them around mental well-being and healthy well-being linked to screen time. Thank you, Julian. Great points. Uh, I know uh, screen time, the screen time feature on Apple devices has been incorporated during Tim Cook's uh, reign and uh, it's getting better and better. So parents and educators have a lot more visibility on what uh, students are looking at. Uh, yeah. Michael, uh, what's your view on this? Uh, you are uh, on the field, as they say. Uh, so uh, what, what's, what's your opinion? Yeah, I think uh, I support it as well. In I support the use of technology in early years, but I think the disadvantages associated with that aren't just about an early years thing. It's at any age in, in, this, in the child's development. You know, there's there's times where people say it's not, oh, screen time's really bad. You know, they're just sat there watching videos or playing games and that kind of thing. But as, you know, Zoe and Jill both said, that it's about the how it's been used and, you know, what it's been used, what it's been used for. What's great is that Apple do have uh, some fantastic features to monitor the, and limit usage. You know, they do have screen time limiters. They have exceptions. They have downtime so that when it gets to an evening, they, they can't access the Wi-Fi anymore and all those kinds of things. And within a school setting, you know, as an ADS school, as you all will as well, you have the, the mobile device management system that will enforce the restrictions and really monitor so that the students are only using it for the correct purposes. You know, they won't be able to get onto certain websites that they would like to play at home and that kind of thing. Um, but also, like, beyond that, if they are at home and, they, you know, maybe it's a people watching now that haven't got uh, Apple devices in their schools yet, and they, but they've got personal Apple devices. There are, are things like the Apple families, which do the same thing. They can, the, their parents can set the restrictions for their student, for their, their kids. They can have, you know, whether monitor their app stores, they can monitor their websites. So all that is happening, and that really does kind of let the, the parents take control of what's happening and make sure they're being used in the correct way. I always say to, to people when they ask about technology, like, it is a tool, like Zoe said, and if you were to use um, a pen and paper and somebody was to, to throw their pencil across the room, you wouldn't suddenly just take all the pencils away and say, right, no one's using pencils. And yet you do see that kind of thing happening with iPads. Like one, per one person's misusing an iPad, right? Okay, we're well, not going to use iPads now, we're going to use pencil and paper. But it's just a tool. It's there and it depends on how you're using it. So we just have to teach the students to use it in the correct ways. Um, but going back to the early years, there are plenty of creative opportunities for using iPads. Um, you can, there's a whole series, there's a whole book for, devoted for teaching and learning around that everyone can create for early years specifically. There's the coding, you can, I've seen KG1 early years, FS1 coding using iPad. Um, it helps with fine motor skills, it, help, it can help with phonics and with number. number. It is all about that, but it, yes, keeping it varied, keeping it balanced, as Jill said, about having you know walking around the room using some augmented reality may be involved in there. This, but there are opportunities, and I don't think we should definitely get away from this. It's a it's a negative by using technology. Thank you, Michael. I know we're coming to the end. We have about a minute left, and I know uh, I'm sure uh, the panel has impressed the audience, and there are at least a few out there who are saying, "Okay, we want to switch. Where do we start?" Uh, there is a question also saying, can we look at some model lessons? Mm -hmm. So just one sentence, please, uh, in the last 60 seconds from each of you. Where should someone who's interested in being an ADS school start? Uh, Jillian, uh, starting with you. They should come and attend our annual Digital Literacy <laughs> Summit that will be 
in Zone 2 and then every year following that. So watch out for the invites and come and join us and we'll show you live. Great. Okay, Zoe? I say work, work with Apple. Work with Apple, draw on their wealth of resources and their experience, um, and then that will make that, that journey to AGS count for you and, and make a difference in what you're able to deliver. Great. And Michael? I would say document everything. They might not think a picture is important. You might not think a piece of data is important. But when it comes to submitting your, your application for ADS, it might be the thing that really, that really helps improve that application. Thank you. And Danny, back to you. Thank you to the whole panel. And it's been an honor to, uh, to be your moderator today. Thank you. Thank you, Naveen. Thank you, Naveen. Thank you. Well, that was brilliant and very insightful. Thank you so much, everyone. If you have any questions pertaining to the session, please send an email to marketing at guesteducation.com or put it in the chat box on the right hand side of the live stream. Also, if you'd like to connect with our speakers, you can do so through the virtual event platform. Once we end the session, you'll be redirected to a short survey. So please tell us what you thought. We'd love to hear from you. A massive thank you to our amazing panelists and everyone who tuned in. Don't miss out on our next live session, which will start in approximately 15 minutes. We hope that you enjoy the rest of the summit. Take care and see you again shortly. Thank you. Bye.